this episode on Focused. Really the goal of this trip is to go explore some new mountain areas that nobody's ever looked at from our eyes, from the eyes of a skier. The only way that we can access these kind of mountains being this far out is to have our boat with all the helicopter fuel on it. I can't think of something else I'd rather be doing right now, to tell you the truth. Imagine it was your job to get sent to the most remote corners of the world to do what you love most. These are athletes, but this is no game. They've been training all their lives, but there's no trophy to win. The friends watching their backs are more than a team. They're a lifeline. They're living a dream that could end as fast as weather changes, equipment breaks, or they misjudge a landing. This is their job. They're sponsored professional athletes that get sent to the most exotic spots on the planet to push the limits of their sport. To capture one moment, 15 seconds of film, a half-page glossy photo, and there's no place they would rather be. When the drop count ends, it's just you, your fear, and the film crew. The world is rushing around you, but for that moment in time, you and the camera have to be focused. My career has just been a dream. I have to pinch myself when I wake up every day because I feel like I've got the best job in the world and uh, met some of the greatest people in the world and made amazing friends all over the place. At the age of 18, I had a dream of becoming a professional skier. And now at the age of 24, I feel like I've finally made it. What I've concentrated on is uh, racing for the last few years, for sure, the last 15 years of what I've been doing. I've always enjoyed free skiing, and for me, there's a huge opportunity to come up here and ski with Matchstick and uh, Chris Davenport and uh, Mark Admer. I'm just lucky to be along for the ride. The goal of the expedition is to ski the jagged peaks of the Boundary Range, setting up base camp at the tip of the Hastings Arm in northern British Columbia. We're just getting ready to leave the port. The docks here at Prince Rupert, the Ocean Explorers, ready to go, all kitted out. So we just left Prince Rupert this morning and uh, we've been, been uh, chugging along here for about five hours. We've just come up this, this passage, this canal, and we're actually seeing some peaks now sticking out of the cloud. Uh, there's a lot of new snow up there and the snow line's actually pretty low, which is good for us. It means that up high, the snow is going to be dry and it's going to be deep. Uh, I'm anticipating some pretty incredible conditions. I, I don't even know what to say. I'm pretty excited. It's going to be awesome. It's a great location. 
interesting and I think uh, all that research that the guys did um, in getting us here has paid off. You know, we're not sort of out in the middle of nowhere with nowhere to ski, we're right in the heart of good. We're right at the top of Hastings Inlet right now and uh, we haven't seen another human being in a couple days and it's uh, a private beautiful place and the big mountains the perfect skiing is just right above us Chris Davenport and I we're gonna go up take advantage of the good weather and go try to ski some first ascents being up here where nobody's skied before so we're having to uh, test out the snow ourselves and uh, figure out the stability on our own I dropped in first, skied a little spawn, landed on this little uh, bench area, and right off the bat, our first run, things started moving on us, so it definitely uh, put us into a little bit more of a tentative situation. The crew decided that there was a moderate avalanche danger, but with weather moving in fast and the perfect peak in their sights, they decided to go for it anyway. We decided that we were going to ski this peak, this perfect triangle. The summit was a perfect point, like I said, and, and it was teeny, so only Mark and I could get in the helicopter. We got, I got out first, Mark handed me the skis, and the, you know, the blades are spinning, and everything's really intense and loud, and you're just like, okay, get, get out, get out. And we get the skis out, and we kind of hunker down. And thinking to yourself, man, this is this is it. It doesn't get any better than this. We're putting our arms up in the air and you know high-fiving each other, just thinking, all right, here we go. This is big. The top half of my run was gonna be fairly exposed and in a position where it could slide or avalanche. And I dropped into my line and where I thought was gonna avalanche, didn't avalanche, so I was pretty pumped on that. Skied down, got through what I thought was gonna be the challenging part of my line, and I was just like, yeah, doing the straight run out of the line, and all of a sudden I got into some super gnarly runnels and bad snow, and started going faster and faster and faster, and eventually my speed caught up with me, and I just got tossed, and ended up tomahawking like 10 or 12 times, and just getting sent into this yeah, crash that Unlike anything I've ever experienced before, it was pretty intense. Now all I saw was Mark with no skis on, scrambling across the snow, and then this huge slide comes smoking past him and he, he managed to avoid it. When that when that happened, I'm still sitting at the top and thinking to myself, you know, this is this is gonna be intense if that's just happened to Mark. I've got a pretty serious line too. Chris to Chai, I'm ready when you guys are. As soon as I got up on that spine, I knew the slough from above wasn't going to touch me. And I went to make a move on top of the spine and felt the slough hit me in the back. Maybe we should have uh, found something a little smaller first, but you know. We were, we were right there and it looked awesome because we knew it was time to go, we knew it was on. That's why we're here, to finally get out in the helicopter and click into your skis and get going. It's, it's what it's all about. It was getting to be pretty late that day, it was like around 6 o'clock. Davenport scoped out this big ass mountain. He was pumped on it. Myself, I was scared. Like. I didn't want to have anything to do with this mountain. Nonetheless, he uh, dropped in that line and he uh, made big turns down this thing and was not skiing slow by any means. Made a couple nice turns through some rye mice and then across the face and uh, just was feeling 
as good as as good as one can feel on a pair of skis. It was uh, awesome, and, and um, I, I decided some at some point in those first few turns to to ski pretty fast. In the end, he got to the bottom, and rather than taking like a nice little easy out, he pointed straight towards the 40-footer. Combination with a lot of slough in his landing, he couldn't really see who was going, and I'm getting worked on the landing, but nonetheless, props to Davenport for charging that big mountain. It capped off what for me is uh, really the reason that I'm here in a place that's never been skied, a place that's never been explored with the eyes of skiers, and, and um, this trip's gonna be the trip of a lifetime. It's awesome. After two big first descents, Chris and Mark make it safe and sound back to the Ocean Explorer and eagerly await the arrival of legendary ski racer, Darren Ralphs. So the trip getting here wasn't uh, your normal um, show up at a little ski resort and go skiing kind of thing. And uh, we dragged our bags out to the docks and jumped on the float plane. And so uh, the boat was about an hour, 10 minute flight. It's pretty cool, you know, you just, you don't just show up at a place like this. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of people like putting together a good game plan and, and uh, a lot of different steps on the way to get here. So that makes it more special. It's like a, it's a full on adventure. I'm so pumped to get him here, get him into the mix, and see what this guy that can go 90 miles an hour down the Hanukkah, you know, Olympian, and, and he's just got an amazing pedigree. I'm really interested to see what's gonna happen when we put him up in these big mountains, you know, these steep powder faces and these cliffs, and uh, I'm expecting big things, but I think at the same time he'll have a few jitters because it's a totally different uh, environment out there, so it's gonna be really interesting to see what he can do. So, Ralph's rolled in, but unfortunately he rolled in when we had, when we had bad weather. You know, we can't go up on the hill because of the weather, but uh, the one good thing is it's reloading for us up there. New snow to ski, and you know, you just gotta play the game, hang out and wait. When you have a lot of time in your hands, you find a lot of things to do. And out here it's pretty cool to explore and check out this kind of wilderness. Coming up on Focused. It's really the motivation behind this trip was to go somewhere that people really hadn't been. We're here, we're right below Big Mountain, but nobody has ever skied. We've been uh, sitting under the cloud for three or four days, and we've just woken up to Bluebird. So we got up early this morning, and now we're hopping in the heli with our skis, and our hopes are high. And as soon as we flew out, we found this amazing ridge with a lot of cool lines on it. Um, some big lines too. It was probably more than we had wanted for our first run of the day, but since we were there, it was something you couldn't really pass up. So Dav and I sham for this line, and I ended up conquering the sham after seven or eight attempts. That was, that was like seven, eight. Yeah. 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 Alpha's got it. Right. Yeah. It's all yours. Yeah. Go find a place to have a kind of few demo fear. Standing out in line. I scoped the line with the best of my ability, but as soon as I got into that thing, everything just looked so much different. It's just a lot of snow started moving. I actually let my slough get ahead of me just because I didn't want to get taken off by, uh, by that slough. Big mountain skiing is just really hard that way, you know, I'm trying to like look at the mountain and find all your landmarks, but as you scheme down, all these landmarks just look totally different. Turn the table to know everything 
Chris is uh, he's one of the best skiers around. He's super solid on his skis. He really commits on line. He just knows so much. He knows so much about what's going to happen up there. It's good to have a guy with that much experience on this trip. And I'm just trying to soak it up as much as I can. I just don't fear. We don't fear. Road boy, get out of here. We are bully boy tactics. You disappear. I've uh, seen him skiing on TV and I've uh, watched him hauling ass down these downhill courses. And I'm uh, yeah, pretty excited to see how he skis and tackles these big mountain lines. We've got a racer here. And I, I have so much respect for that guy. It's, uh, it's as gnarly as anything that we do out in the big mountains. This is kind of one thing that is a treat for me. It's like the most incredible experience that I could get myself into. First run with MSP was a, was a good experience. A whole different world for me, being on top of something where I don't know what I'm getting into, just rolling over, but uh, gotta love this kind of snow. And I had a, had a blast, I had two pretty mellow runs, but snow is as good as it gets, and several tastes, my first experience up here, so looking for more. It was cool just to see him stomp his first line, he was super pumped. Darren is the most successful speed skier downhill in Super G in 20 years in the U.S. He's the man. When I finished that, I saw that just pouring off. Nice, dude. Awesome. That little one gave me a little thumper at the top. Yeah, staying on top, you're just like, all right, here we go. Nice. So you just lay that <laughs> hip in, just kind of slowing yep. yourself down. The Butter and That snow is incredible. incredible. So nice. Perfect, huh? When I was 18 years old, I went out and started to pursue the, uh, the goal of becoming a professional skier. And it took me until I was the age of 23 before I actually started getting a paycheck or making a little bit of money. A dream come true, really. I've only known Mark Abma for a year, and uh, uh, he's kind of the rookie on this trip in terms of his experience level. Um, but the confidence there is there. I've seen it uh, in the videos, and I've seen it in talking to him. So I think it's just a question of him uh, packing some more runs under his belt and learning the ropes. Um, he's a natural. He's going to pick it up real quick. On this trip, I bring the most experience in these, in these big and gnarly mountains to the crew. Pretty interesting blend of talent on this trip. It's been fun for me because I think it's been one of the first trips where I've actually been the guy with the most experience and, and the most knowledge about these mountains. And I've really enjoyed helping the other guys you know, talk about their lines and pick stuff out and, and learn a bit about it. Racing is a huge part of my life, and I've been sacrificing a lot of things ever since I can remember, since I was like 14 years old, moving away from home, and uh, just ripping around everywhere, racing gates. <laughs> For me, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity to get away from the racing scene, the training, and the seriousness of it, and, and just come up and do a little heli skiing. Basing on a big ship like this for skiing, for helicopter skiing, it has got to be one of the all-time most exotic 
uh, fun things that I've ever done in the sport of skiing. Well, Mother Nature uh, appears to have dealt us a poor hand. We had a big storm yesterday, and it was pouring on the boat, raining really hard, but we figured for sure it had to be snowing up high, and, and today is beautiful. We get out today and get up and look around, and all the glaciers and all the peaks are just runneled, and it, which means that it rained on all the snow. It's rained up to 7,000 feet, so we're kind of sitting here in the sun wondering what to do. Hard to say what our lines are going to be like when we go out to try to ski them, but we've got a couple good things picked out today, and uh, pretty fired up after sitting on the boat for a couple days to charge. So we're flying around the Cambria Glacier, not really knowing if we're going to have anything to ski. The rain had come through, the sun had baked it, but Davenport happened to notice this one peak coming up, and it just looked epic. Try. Sort of the world is our oyster, so to speak, here. Every day we go out, it's a first ascent. You're, uh, you're laying down a line that's never been done, and without this boat, to access this terrain, it would be impossible, and these mountains would remain unskied. Change your mind, my mind is gone. I want it back. Train wreck, rapper, keep my life on the track. Anyone is everyone, and anything is everything. And no one is a nobody. I know it in my brain. Heard a wise man say, and I say it the same. It ain't how many times you're falling if you get Darren's was kind of big, and so I was a little bit nervous for him, but uh, you know I didn't really want to say anything because it was going to be his decision whether he did it or not. But you know he wasted no time at all and just sent the thing. Perfect landing, made a nice turn and controlled it. And um, you know for somebody without uh, you know tons of experience in these mountains, he looked uh, made it look like it was uh, you know old hat. Sort of increased the intensity, increased the level, and, and uh, it was a good step for what was to come uh, on the next day. This is how it feels to suffer, and I had so much to say. But it's over now. Wow, what a morning. Uh, another sunny day, and uh, the fact that it rained a couple days ago actually hasn't put too much of a damper on it because we flew out this morning, sat down on this glacier, found Mount Super Size Me or whatever right behind us. The landing on the summit was about the size of a dinner plate, and it was pretty scary. One of the scariest landings I've had in a few years up there. Darren went first and just charged it. And when you have something that steep, like 45, 50 degrees, whatever it is, um, you don't want to roll over because <laughs> you won't stop. But uh, there's a lot of things that to pay attention to. But I think that's what makes it, you know, what makes you feel so alive. And then he released this huge avalanche that, if you were in its way, it would have been the end. And so then I'm thinking to myself, all right, uh, this is serious. I'm a little scared, but I think I got it. So I just skied the upper face really, really fast to try to put as little weight on the snow as possible. And I looked, did one look back and everything was fine. And so I, I knew I was okay. Just had to navigate some debris from, from the avalanche. And then I had a great lower section of the run that was really fun within small air. And it was intense. It was awesome. It was great being on top with Darren and just kind of soaking up the intensity of these unbelievable mountains. All right, so my line began with starting on top of that peak. And my first four or five turns were on a pretty steep pitch. And when you're skiing on a steep pitch in this kind of snow, a lot of the snow can start rolling and produce a slough. And my concern with that slough was that when I had to cut underneath the ice, that the slough was going to end up rolling off this ice and end up 
hitting me in the head and taking me out and carrying me to the bottom of the mound. Just dealing with this super wet stuff. The, the snow has a lot of power and you just don't want to get in the way of it. So as soon as I started skiing down, I noticed that uh, most of the slough had already happened previously and that I wasn't going to have anything trailing me or taking me out. And I, uh, I felt confident and finished off the line. Yeah, Mark. Hey, Dad. Job, dude. Hit with it. How's your line? It's awesome. Nice one. Super fun. It's kind of a nice way to end it off, you know? Down here with a bunch of bros and, and watching Chris and, and Mark stick their lines. And it's, uh, it's fun, man. It's a great way to uh, share the experience and watch other guys have a, lot, have a blast up there, too. So it's a good living. So after two weeks in the mountains, we are finally back on the ocean, back heading home, heading to port. Uh, what's been the, one of the best ski trips of my lifetime. This has just been incredible, uh, checking out a whole new zone where nobody's ever gone to ski these mountains that we've skied. And uh, a lot of sunny days actually, some with powder, some without, but all in all an amazing trip. And if I've learned one thing uh, in doing these types of trips over the years is that it always leaves you hungry for more. Yeah, I got a name, but maybe $2 to it. Just try and cop a chain, making blue collar music. The truth is, ain't much has changed. Still seems that craft in a sucks the same. Hard to come up in the game with a bucking chain.